What is up y'all? It is the Project Photography back with another video and today people, today we have an incredible tutorial on how to shoot panoramas. And essentially you are able to turn your 24 megapixel camera into a 70 megapixel beast. And this is one of my favorite landscape photography techniques to do because it does a few things for us. First of all, we're able to create obviously higher megapixel images. We can create an aspect ratio that we want. With panoramas, you can essentially create whatever aspect ratio you want without losing megapixels and it's really great for that. We're able to get a deeper sense of compression in our images and on top of it, we were able to shoot you know, things in just such a unique way that other techniques in landscape photography simply can't do. It's one of my favorite techniques. But there are a few caveats. First of all, you pretty much should only do this with a telephoto lens. You can do this with a wide angle, but it is definitely not advised. It's required just much more technique as well as something called a parallax tool. And ideally, you should be doing this on still subjects. And for me, the subject matter that I like to do this most on is mountains and just things that are generally far away that can create a very interesting image out of. So in today's episode, we are gonna be walking through how to actually shoot this on location and then what tools you'll need as well as the settings. And then we'll be bringing it back into the studio in terms of how to edit and so forth. We're just gonna be using Lightroom. So it's actually gonna be a very easy tutorial to go through. So yeah, with that being said, let's cut to the B-roll and get right into showing us how to shoot panoramas. All right, so now that you know, you know when to shoot a panorama and if it's even possible in your possible condition, now it's time to show you what is exactly inside my bag here to shoot panoramas. And for me, having a camera with a telephoto lens is absolutely essential. So for me, I am shooting with a Nikon Z6 with the 24 to 200. That is a telephoto lens of my choice. And this is kind of nice because it has that like kind of normal focal range of a 24 to 70 there, as well as the 70 to 200 aspect. So I feel like focal and wise, like this is amazing for me, but you can use stuff like a, you know, 70 to 300, 100, 400 will do just fine. And then something that I think is honestly very important to shooting good panoramas is having a nice L bracket. Now for me, I have the Sunway Photo one for the Nikon Z6. And this allows me to essentially put my camera into vertical orientation and make sure that when I'm panning it and so forth around my tripod that you know it is in its natural state because it's really hard to put your camera like this and then tip it over. And then it's just like an awkward motion. You definitely don't wanna go through that. And then we have the Pete Design Travel Tripod Aluminum. Now this is a great tripod for me. I've used it for years, had it since the Pete Design launch, but having a good tripod is essential because if you have one that isn't that smooth, then it'll be very difficult to get a good pan. So now I'm gonna be showing you the settings to shoot great panoramas. And for me, having an F8 aperture is very nice normally, but for panoramas, I prioritize shutter speed more than anything for me I always try to shoot with a pretty decent shutter speed so I mean honestly you can kind of get away with like 1 50th or so but if you're especially at the telephoto range you'll probably want a little more and then I obviously try to go to the lowest ISO setting normally but it can be kind of difficult when you're shooting panoramas because you really want to prioritize that shutter speed another thing that's really important for me is making sure that when I am shooting these panoramas that we keep a single shot mode, of course, like you don't want to be doing bursts because I just feel like it's a lot more unstable. And then from there, what we're going to do is put our camera into vertical orientation for me at least because I'm shooting a horizontal image. But if you want a vertical image, you could do the exact same process I'm about to show you just in horizontal orientation and then going up or down. So when you're actually shooting this panorama, make sure that when you're actually capturing the photos that they overlap with one another, that's really important. And honestly, my best rule of thumb is that it's better to overlap too much than to not overlap enough because then we're gonna be missing some parts and it's gonna look kind of weird. So overlap more than you probably think you need to. And then obviously, you know, pan as smoothly as possible. It is difficult to get like a perfect pan all the time. So just give yourself a decent amount of tries to go ahead and do it. And then last but not least, know where you want to start the image and then end the image. So from here, I'm gonna go into my settings and I'm gonna set everything to what I actually want for a good panorama. So 
for me it's manual focus we're gonna make sure into manual focus of course never use continuous for this it's gonna be not a good scenario make sure i'm in manual exposure of course so you can change everything yourself okay so now we, we figured everything out now you can see the screen and so forth and i know what my composition is going to be so I'm gonna be going from this end of the mountain range all the way here. When I do it, I wanna make sure my level is obviously level. Uh, it's not gonna come out because there's gonna be zero photos, but I'm gonna show you the photos I took after this in order to get that final result. But right now, it's just a tutorial on how I'm doing it. So as you can see, I'm overlapping quite a bit. Honestly, not putting much distance between uh, takes, but one, one sixtieth of a second is nice. And we go ahead and just there i try to keep the level as level as possible but it can be difficult there will be the final image as you can see it is really beautiful i mean being able to take an image like this with the nice fog world again is absolutely gorgeous and especially at this time uh, i'm gonna go ahead and waiting for you know when actual sunset is but that was just a demonstration of how it is here is the unedited version and then here is it put all together with the edited version and so forth. With that being said, we're actually gonna go back to the studio. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually edit these photos into one full panorama that's gonna turn out to be like seven the megapixels or so probably. I don't know, maybe more, maybe around an 80 megapixel image. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go back to the studio, show you guys how to do it, and all you need is Lightroom, and it's so incredibly simple, guys. No Photoshop needed, and the tutorial for it is going to be amazing. So yeah, guys, see you guys back at the studio. All right, y'all, we are now back in the studio. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually edit these photos in Lightroom. So first of all, something I think is really important just for organization purposes is to make sure that you have all the panorama images in one folder. We don't wanna have them like in our unedited folder and just have it be a mess. So one folder is perfectly fine. And from there, we're gonna go ahead and open up our folder. I already organized everything because I'm pretty sure you guys don't wanna see that. But we're just gonna go ahead and throw it into Lightroom. We have 80 photos here. Once they're all loaded in, we're gonna shift from the first one and then to the last, so we select all of them, right click wherever, and then go ahead and use Photo Merge Panorama. And that's literally it. As you can see, the settings I have here is spherical, and then auto crop is fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and wait for the panorama to actually go ahead and be created. So just a few notes that I have when actually creating this in Lightroom. Uh, the photo that you're gonna be getting is editable, so you don't have to go ahead and like edit each one or go ahead and edit one and sync. You can actually just edit this file itself and then that's pretty much it. You can change whatever aspect ratio you want. I think I projected this image to be about like 100 megapixels, which is crazy, but there are some parts I had to like cut down on, so we'll see what the final result is. And so here, as you can see, we have the panorama successfully merged and we're gonna go ahead and allow it to create the actual image itself. So now we come up with the final result and this is an editable file. So we're gonna go ahead and just run through just a small edit and then I'll show you guys the final product. I don't really have any notes to say about how to edit a panorama specifically versus like a regular photo. For me, it's just, I honestly just make a good edit because it's not gonna be any different necessarily. One thing I really like is that you can mess around with the aspect ratio and you know what you want to see in your panorama. But yeah, so maybe just a little something like that. Nothing crazy to be honest. Okay, so I actually redid the panorama that I shot in terms of like the editing. So I went back and just used these lens corrections on all the images to make sure that vignetting was not prominent at all. And so that's the reason why those lines actually showed up is because of vignetting. So I guess when you're shooting, make sure to have like an F8 aperture. Don't use any filters or anything because that'll increase vignetting. So I guess I learned something new today. I really haven't had to deal with that before. But yeah, just make sure you're shooting with little vignetting as possible. And if you can't, then just try to correct it in post on all the images. This is what the final image should look like. And this image is 100 megapixels, which is just absolutely nuts. Let me know what you guys think of this video. This is actually a really simple tutorial to be honest with you. And I think it's just like making sure that you know how to actually shoot it. So next time you go out and shoot, you can apply these to your landscape photography. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.